Okay. Here, this is the plan. Mm -hmm. An old excavation. Right. This is all. Not. This is this terrace here. Mm -hmm. We are here. So our squares are here. Mm -hmm. And here behind us should be something in situ. We are not sure. And here was the entrance to the tunnel. Yeah, already. It's, it's kind of strange that they left this stuff here. Yeah. We yeah, and so all that we have found in situ is now here. Yeah. And we have a profile from exactly this section. This one. Yeah. It starts so now we are standing on the wrong side. So it's, this starts here and it runs. Mm-hmm. And you have to look it from behind. <laughs> right? And here was a big block in the middle. Maybe they removed it. They they quarried it. Yeah. yeah. And so this is the the block layer. Here's we are now mm -hmm. in this block layer. And these are the, the sediments we like to reach. So this is the, the probably layer. upper upper Paleolithic and the layer X is the leaf point layer. Ten. Yeah, ten. Yeah, ten. Let's see. Yeah, but uh, well, let's say if 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 this is the the block layer, so yeah. this, so this is really the, the bottom of the excavation now. So it means we have to go like at least uh, two to two to three meters yeah. further down. Yeah. To to meet the layer ten, yeah, which is going to be quite um, yeah a hole yeah. yeah, but yeah, but now we already reached two meters, so maybe we what we try to find this here is the contact at least the contact of this layer and this layer because mm. it's a loamy brown layer, and then we know exactly where we are in the yeah, profile, yeah, and then we yeah. know how deep we have to go. Mm -hmm. and it so uh, here is still this this layer surrounding the rock form. Yeah. So this is exactly. So this is the in situ material. Yeah. Right. It goes down. Then we have another facies. Like it's also in situ. We we think, but it comes from above. It's surrounding the rock. It's like a black mm -hmm. thing surrounding mm -hmm. the rock. And so we chiseled a little bit off this rock. So here was a hole under the rock. And these are the stones that you see on the profile. They, no, these are the stones. This is back dirt where we're standing mm -hmm. right now. So the whole the brown layer here. And this is stones they threw against the profile to secure it when they filled it up. And that's why you have holes here. I see. And the holes are more or less the contact. Yeah, it was a, a, a wall of uh, dry stones that had been yeah. So the brown layer, you think it's how, how deep from, from here? Possibly about 1 meter 20, 1 meter, As if yeah. we are lucky. Yeah. Yeah, so. So here, we are, what, what, where we are here in this section is we are more or less, I think, in the late glacial period or in the glacial mm -hmm. maximum because of the rockfall. Mm -hmm. So in these upper layers here, we had we found one piece of lithic which looks upper uh, Paleolithic. Mm -hmm. It's like a, like a backed point from a. I, I, I saw it there. In yeah. the lab. Okay. They have lots of prey here, and they're spinning the, the bones. But this uh, <coughs> is a little. Uh, Back yeah, no in, the, uh, in the lab, mm -hmm. it came from what layer? Mm -hmm. It came from the 4A from this layer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But more or less from here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that might be a very late place. We need, we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we had another small blade yeah. found in the screen. Mm -hmm. It was um, of a reddish carnial, mm -hmm. it's carnial, local raw material. So in these uh, four millimeters mm -hmm. uh, screen,
screen. Uh, do you find bone fragments? A little bit. So here's yeah, one like, like this. Yeah. Because it's w the plan is that, of course, if we find nice uh, human remains mm -hmm. in any layer, yeah. I'll be very happy, very yeah, excited. <laughs> but <laughs> even if we don't find anything spectacular, mm -hmm. the plan is that we're going to screen all the bone fragments that are unidentified in this uh, size class. Uh, using a molecular technique to extract everything that could be human and then to go for paleogenetics or other molecular uh, studies which uh, I think if we have a large uh, number of bone fragments uh, sooner or later we will uh, it means we will be able to put our hands on at least a, a tiny fragment of, of human and uh, that's that's uh, potentially we resolve the question of who made what in this site, especially when we get to the transitional layers where we don't know if it's Neanderthals, modern humans who made them. Uh, I mean, we produce these uh, industries. Uh, we can establish by paleogenetics or by paleoproteomics what is the biological nature of this of this uh, of these humans so in other words it's very important to to collect all the bone fragments even small ones because who knows uh, might be a little piece of of, uh, of human that would escape if we just rely on morphology mm. so are we finished with this count yes uh, because I have a, a middle place to see in uh, Hominin 2 side, I need to see this guy. Okay. So, okay. we launch it. I think the it's okay, but the field of view is a little bit mm. uh, too large for the object, and we could probably get a.
Could you explain me a bit more about the tooth? For a long time, the, the study of uh, fossil hominins uh, was based on what we call comparative anatomy, which is basically looking at the, the shape of different organs and especially the, the skeleton for fossils, uh, comparing these shapes with what we know in apes and other mammals and trying to understand things about the adaptation of, of these uh, ancient creatures. Uh, also uh, things about their phylogeny, how they connect one with the other in terms of ancestry. Uh, th the way this uh, anatomy was studied was rather simple in past. It was uh, based on simple measurements, uh, diameters, uh, width, breadth, uh, depth, uh, curvature, um, and also on sometime on, on non-metrical features. Um, primarily because of the development of uh, imagery on the one hand and also computer sciences, uh, we, we have made huge progresses in assessing shapes and, and shapes, uh, shape differences. And we can now quantify that in a much more sophisticated way. Uh, what, when we have an object like that, we don't simply take uh, measurements of the, its length, its width, and uh, a couple of other parameters like that. But we can uh, place on, we can set on the surface on this object, and even inside, landmarks for which we record the, the coordinates in space. And we have mathematical tools that, of course, are uh, supported by uh, software uh, that allow us in a very, I would say, a subtle way to measure these differences in shapes between uh, different, different, uh, for example, teeth, uh, the same teeth, tooth uh, of uh, different species of hominins. And we can, uh, thanks to what we call paleontro virtual paleontropology, we can uh, explore internal structures, like for example in this tooth, we can remove the enamel of the tooth and unveil a structure. This uh, landmarks on, on the surface of this uh, tooth, but we can also explore internal structures, uh, like for example the pulp or cavity, or we can separate the enamel uh, from the dentine, the, the bony part of the uh, of the tooth and we unveil a, a sort of complex landscape that nobody can ever see uh, what we call the enamel dentine junction and, and you see all these crests and these horns and by using this uh, geometric morphometrics uh, method by placing these landmarks and analyzing them with um, software um, we obtain a very fine distinction that we can quantify between very closely related uh, groups of, of uh, apes, for example. And so uh, this proves that we can use this method for ancient hominins also and, and basically try to uh, 